What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Flying with Garrett. I know it's been a while. If you can tell from my previous vlogs, I've been traveling around the world. I did an official lap, start from finish, all the way from Charlotte, around the entire world, back to Charlotte. It was awesome. If you didn't check out any of those vlogs, definitely go check them out. Did a lot of cool stuff, skydiving in Dubai, went to Japan, Rome, the Philippines. It was a blast. But Today's episode is a much requested video. I put up a poll on my Instagram of what today's episode should be on because I did make a pledge to everyone that I'm gonna have two videos a week, at least for the next four weeks. I was gonna do it for the month of October, but I started a little bit late. And today's episode is, is it too late to be an airline pilot? Believe it or not, my demographic on Instagram, a lot of them were like older guys in their 40s and some in their 50s asking, hey, is it too late for me to be an airline pilot? And I'm here to tell you, no, it's not. I'm gonna read you a stat real quick from the Gamma Data Book, which I'm not sure what that is, but I've got about four different articles here that have all said range from 49.9 to 53 years old. This was in 2017, they said 53 years old was the median age of pilots at major airlines. And these major airlines in, include United, Delta, American, and Southwest. So what does that mean? 53 years old, well, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, 65 years old is a mandatory retirement age for airline pilots, for anyone flying under 121, which is the airline industry basically in the United States. So 65 mandatory retirement. It doesn't matter if you can still hold and obtain a first class medical, but that is just the regulations. So what all comes into this retirement and um, you know, this 65, you know, the day you turn 65, you're done. Some people have to retire early due to medical reasons. So the medical issue for anyone who's also not familiar with that, you have to obtain a first class medical and up to 40 years old, you have to renew that medical once a year. And after your 40th birthday, you have to go and get a first class medical twice a year. So every six months. So some of these uh, people, they, you know, they run into health issues and they can't keep a first class medical. It might be high blood pressure. There's a long list of stuff. Uh, maybe their eyes are going bad. So some people do retire early. So if the mandatory retirement age is 65 and the average age of pilots right now at the major carriers is 53 years old around there, we're gonna be in some big trouble in the next 10 to 12 years. So what does that mean? The military and the regional carriers are trying to get as many pilots as possible because that's where the majors primarily draw from, our regional carriers. So you have some companies that have wholly owned carriers like American Airlines. They own, um, I just went brain dead, they own Piedmont, PSA, and Envoy. And what that means is with Americans wholly owned, they have a flow through program. So you come to one of the regional carriers and you fly for anywhere from four to seven years depending on the carrier and flow time. So four to seven years and you're on with American Airlines. Now Delta has something similar, but it's not a guaranteed flow through. I believe some of those, I'm not familiar with it, but it is like a guaranteed interview with Delta Airlines. I believe uh, Endeavor is one of those. So um, American has the three wholly owns and then Delta has Endeavor, which is like a guaranteed interview with Delta basically. So that's their way of uh, kind of incentivizing pilots to go to those certain regional carriers because maybe if uh, American is your final destination one day, one of those three wholly owned sounds awesome, you know, because that's a guaranteed ticket to American Airlines. And also if you go with Endeavor, that definitely increases your chances of working for Delta one day. So, is it too late for you to become an airline pilot? And like I said before, the answer is absolutely not. And I'll tell you some of my experiences of why I believe it is not too late to be an airline pilot. So my last four day trip, my first officer was probably 45 to maybe even 55 years old. And he, this was a second career for him. He was an NYPD cop for, I don't know, 25 plus years and he retired from that and decided to come and fly airplanes, which I think is phenomenal. And this isn't the only one that I've flown with who 
decided to come and pursue aviation as a second career. I've flown with plenty of guys who haven't flown in the last 20 plus years and they just stumbled into a airline career fair. Maybe they got tired of their job or, or who knows and they just decided to go get an IPC which is an instrument, instrument proficiency check get recurrent in an airplane go out and fly some you know Cessnas again knock all the rust off and then go and interview and a lot of these airlines like I've said before we're gonna run into this big pilot shortage in the next 10 to 12 years where these major carriers are gonna have to replace half of the airline half of the airline and right now the regionals just aren't prepared to do that because if the majors come in and take everyone away the regional carriers won't have anyone so that's why all these regional carriers are offering these huge sign-on bonuses and big incentives i'm an idiot and forgot to charge my camera battery so i had to throw a new battery in there but i believe i was talking about incentives that these regional carriers are offering now these days anywhere from like 15 to $40,000 signing bonuses depending on if you have uh, PIC time from any 121 carrier or even 135 which is charter. Um, so if you were a corporate pilot and you're deciding to make the switch over to the airline world, huge incentives. So what does this mean now? <clears throat> Maybe I've convinced even just one of you to become an airline pilot. Somehow you stumbled across this video and you're, you're 40 years old and you're tired of your career and you're ready for something new and different. What are the next steps that you can take? So I've told in numerous videos that I believe the best way to get to the airline industry, the fastest, and no, I do not work with this company. I've never worked with it. I didn't even go to this school, but ATP, I, I truly believe that you can go there and in two years have start from zero flight time and be on your way to an airline, which is crazy to think about. Of course, it is, it is expensive and it is an investment, but if you're at 40 years old and you're getting in to the airline industry, you have 25 years to make so much money. And I've made videos about this before. I believe it was titled Millionaire Pilots or something like that. If you're curious, if you're getting into this airline kind of talk and thinking about making that jump go watch that video just to kind of see like financially what the airlines can do for you for retirement wise because i obviously know that that's a big issue you know doing a career switch and you know 40 plus years old saying okay well i only have 20 25 years until retirement you know that's a big issue so Go check out that video. It, it breaks down, you know, all the financials of uh, retirement, what airlines offer regarding matching and 401k and contribution. So um, definitely, I, I understand that you know, eighty plus thousand dollar investment, but it is it will be beneficial, and it's the coolest job in the world. Getting to fly an airplane, a jet airplane for a living, getting paid pretty damn well to do it. Is, is definitely a cool thing. So go to a flight school. Uh, you can, you know, if you're 40 years old, you've probably got some cash saved up. So maybe you could pay out of pocket for a lot of it. I'd explore all your options, buying an airplane and hiring a um, kind of a, a flight instructor from one of the flight schools to, to work with you on the side in your airplane where you pay them cash. You know, that, that works out. Um, just definitely do your research, but I do suggest ATP as the quickest zero time to airline pilot there is. And then of course, whenever you start looking at the regional carriers, that is where you're gonna start. If you are making that career change and you have no aviation background, you will start at the regional carriers. And uh, you won't be there forever, but if let's say you wanna go to the regional carriers and then you wanna go to like a Spirit or a uh, Frontier or an Allegiant, kind of one of those low cost carriers, you only, I know some of those carriers, um, at least at my airline, some guys were jumping over from the right seat to the right seat of, uh, you know, like Spirit without ever upgrading, no PIC time. So right seat to right seat. And so those are great careers as well, especially if you're not, um, because they, they pay really great. What separates, what I would say what separates like 
the low cost carriers pay versus the you know American Delta United is once you start getting way up there in your seniority, those guys start making a lot of money, and that really pulls away and differentiates between you know like a a wide body captain, triple seven, three thirty, three fifty, you know those those people to you know, um, one of those low cost carriers where they don't have the wide bodies, but it'd still be an absolutely phenomenal c career. And I couldn't be happier at where I am. Um, yes, I know, of course, I'm 26 years old and um, I hit the wave perfectly, but I've, I've been in the aviation world a long time. You know, my just background, my father has been with one of the major carriers for 35 years, 35 years and uh, my grandfather retired from a major carrier. My uncle flies corporate. Um, and, and that's also another thing, you know, you don't have to be an airline pilot just because you're making that career switch. You could be a corporate pilot. Definitely do your research, do your research. So um, I hope that's answered your question. Um, like I've said before, I've flown with, you know, I've only been a captain for six months and I've flown with a bunch of first officers who this is their second, sometimes even third career. So um, 40 plus years old, no problem. You've got 20 plus years of, of getting to do the best job in the world. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like these Flying With Garrett episodes, throw it down in the comments below of what you would want to see next episode. Please smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube al algorithm. My views have been kind of down the last few videos, but it happens, it goes in waves. So definitely smash that thumbs up button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you're still here, got something pretty awesome in here. I'm starting a new company. I've given out hints on my Instagram. Uh, if you don't follow me there, fly with Garrett. I'm on there every single day. This is this is going to be awesome. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Uh, I've got the ball rolling. And uh, yeah, definitely check that out because I'm going to be doing some giveaways on uh, what the product is. I don't know. We'll find out, but it'll be happening in the next month. So uh, two videos a week. I'm going flying with my dad tomorrow. I'll probably do a video on can airline captains still fly a single engine airplane? I don't know, we're going to try it out. So like I said, smash that thumbs up button, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you guys next video.